Hello, I'm MapKX ToyCat, and I've been really busy doing stuff here in the United States of America. It's been some weird complex stuff, but that hasn't stopped me from wanting to play some Minecraft and indeed working on one of my biggest projects over here to create the Never in the Overworld. It's going pretty well so far, but you can see there are some clear places that need some redoing. So why don't I do two things at once? Why don't I make my Never Overworld just a little bit better and at the same time explain to you what I am doing in this corner of the world and what has brought me back so many times and indeed maybe uh, not too much let's let's go through it all in today's let's play because hello I'm ABX Toycat and welcome back to an episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Update Adventures let's play a let's play where I have boxes and boxes and boxes of Neverack and indeed more to come uh, so that I can place them into big walls to make a never in my overworld it's a very promising project and if you're curious as to where we're starting this wall right here I think that needs some work and so Wow, you can see the difference already. I feel like I'm much more in the nether than I was before, but now the bits that don't have a wall are even more visible. I think I have to keep the wall going all the way over until it's hidden behind this building. So at least from here, I can have a fully nevered up section. So, you know, more fun block placing time, go. So I made the wall go all the way past there. In fact, I made it go quite a way past there. And I also raised it up by a few blocks and now I have a much nicer wall that is quite substantial. However, now that it goes for so much of the world, I think I need to finish the entirety of this. This is gonna take some serious timing, but you know, just real quick, you gotta place more wall. Sometimes it's what you gotta do. So all the way around this corner is now gonna go up to there. How long will it take me? Probably too long. But you don't have to see that because, wow, magic editing time. We're now three layers up and you can see the wall has made some serious progress. Now it's another block tooler. Whoa. Honestly, it's starting to blend in a lot more. It looks the same between runs now, but still. Yeah, adding these three blocks made a huge difference, but we've got to add some more. Looking pretty good, right? I mean, it's nighttime. It's been a lot of time spent. This looks really cool. I like it. I like it a lot. And so now we have walls around almost all of the world. They're not the same height. Now we just have to work on the ground. So all of this is gonna be covered in Neverack and maybe we make this into an ocean of lava. It's already an ocean, I guess. We make it into a lava pit. Um, but yeah, for now, things are pretty good. Just gotta get right back to the Neverack placing game but next time it's on the ground. So the first three blocks added something nice to the height. The second three blocks made it feel like a real wall in the ocean. The third set of three blocks is where diminishing returns started to reset in. And the fourth one uh, was much nicer, but I think where we are now is a really good place to be. You can definitively tell where the nether is supposed to end. And although there's ocean here right now, that's not gonna be there for long. In fact, I've got lots and lots of plans here, but the first and perhaps most important one is to place some nevrak on the ground. I mean, obviously having this ocean be made out of lava or something else having some land plans is a really good idea but it's important to find where the nether is and where the nether isn't and again this is an old style nether so we will be using just neverack to make the what is it called now the nether waste biome and uh, it is going to include the edges of right over here so yeah, this little corner of the world might make the most sense to replace with lava, because again, I'm trying to keep the vague sense of the terrain that exists right now. However, having a big border that has lava going right up to it does look kind of unnatural. So I think this is one of the few places where it makes sense to build an island from scratch. There's all sorts of weird considerations like this that I'm gonna have to start going into. But yeah, we'll go a little bit down below the surface and then just later replace it with some blocks. It'll be real nice. However, speaking of real nice, uh, yeah, this is the big project. This is the point 
from which I'm going to be building it onwards in this video, maybe with a little bit more daylight. And uh, yeah, the reason for this is because this is a huge project that's going to take a lot of time. And honestly, big projects are an important opportunity to not only build and shape your Minecraft world, but also to really think. I think Minecraft is a great game because in the later stages of the game, you can really start to evaluate and consider some things like the situation I've ended up in right now, uh, where like I mentioned, I'm in a very interesting situation geographically speaking, but how and why does that come to be? What is the deal with that, Mr. Toycat? It's something that is super important to talk about and don't get me wrong, think that it's incredibly important to talk about things, but I also think it's really easy to just avoid doing so. I think when anything's super important, you'll do basically anything you can to avoid talking about it. And if that has to be, oh no, there's a drowned right here. Oh, we better kill that. And <laughs> you know, if that has to be like, oh, well, you know, where are we going to place Nevrak next? Over here? Sounds good. Then you can use that and it'll be just fine for it. Except, oh, you know, I really should get a bed over here, shouldn't I? I'm just kidding, of course. Like all good problems, the bed can be pushed off till tomorrow at the very least. And honestly, you can do this with most of your problems, including talking about some important stuff. But like, I really do want to talk about something else first, because 1.20 has been having like a big resurgence of a reveal this February. And I think that's interesting on the level of like, you know, as a, as a PR, like as someone who technically makes their living in marketing, I always see it interesting to see how various companies choose to do this. More and more the method of don't announce everything, try to just release it at the last minute, is gaining some real steam. And I think that's uh, probably telling us something about how over- hyped and overmarketed certain things can be, but it's also telling uh, me something very interesting uh, about the way that, you know, like they're approaching things as a whole. As a studio, they're trying to realize that like, yeah, we have uh, for so long, like kind of overhyped things. What's the best way to undo that is to do the exact opposite. What is the opposite of overhype? It is underhype. It is don't really even talk about your thing until you're ready to share it, which is a lesson that I think would be valuable for more and more people to learn. Uh, but the other interesting debate that we've been having as a result of 1.20 is because, uh, you know, there, there are quite a few decorative only blocks in this update. I think the torch flower is the one that really sparks the biggest conversation. Does every block, or I think the cherry blossom leaves too though, like uh, a few people have said, shouldn't the cherry blossom leaves uh, like drop some cherries? And obviously they're not cherry leaves, like cherry leaves are, a, that's a separate plant that looks like this. A cherry blossom is uh, just a type of the flowering stage uh, that exists in plants. But uh, you know, the, the more interesting debate there is like, so does it need to have a use? Can cherry blossom you, uh, you know, leaves be valid just because they are leaves that are pink and they're pretty? And I actually think the answer is kind of yes. It's it's weird to me that the answer is yes, but I actually think it is. And um, to go a step even further on this one, because why not? I think I would even go as far as to say, also I'm going to make uh, just a few of these blocks a little higher up, just so we have some more texture here. Um, I think I might go as far as to say um, that more and more blocks should have uses. The, the cherry blossom, you know, like, uh, isn't the one that comes to mind, but the, the, uh, the torch flower is a great example of, like, yes, there is a real-life thing called a torch flower, and it's not luminescent. In fact, if you look at any real-life plant, with very few exceptions, they're not going to be luminescent, because that's, <laughs> well, I think bioluminescent, because it's biological. You know, like, that's not a real thing that happens in the world. That'd be ridiculous, uh, to expect it, I think you could say, uh, quite rightly. However, at the same time, okay, this is, this should be enough that if I drain the water off here, it will look kind of interesting. But now how do I stop the later lava from just pouring down onto this? I guess I've got to make it a bit taller in some more parts just to make sure that it does survive. Yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. I'll have some, some extra height, like in the corner itself, uh, just, just to have something uh, to kind of place on top of. And also to make this corner right here slightly less harsh. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, I think that grab some more Neverack now that we're full. Um, I, I think that the, there is this really interesting, you know, question about, like, does everything need a use? And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, like, fall down very heavily on their sides of, like, well, of course, uh, you know, like, everything doesn't need a use. Things can just be pretty. But I, uh, I made a Twitter thread about this, and first of all, that seems to be the vocal minority. About a third of people agree that, like, well, things can just be pretty, and that's enough uses for them. Uh, but I, I, I think that, you know, looking at it a bit more objectively, that's actually a terrible, uh, you know, that, that's that's not the majority opinion, but it's also a terrible point because most people, when they point to aesthetic-only blocks, actually miss it. I mean, here was a really great comment. I, you know, I respect this person for saying, like, well, the question should come down to, is the grass block valuable about a use? And if you look at the grass block, I think the sand block too, they both look like they're solely there to provide, you know, that the grass block exists so that you can see there is grass in your world. It's there to represent grass. It doesn't need to have some amazing use where you can enchant your nautilus shells into 
firework rockets or whatever insane dumb thing, it's much better as a aesthetic block, right? However, the funny thing about grass as an example, because it's a, a lot of people do point to blocks that are basic like this, uh, the funny thing about grass is grass does have a function. Not only, okay, so let, let me show you something amazing right here. Um, not only is grass useful because you can uh, use it to expand to other blocks, so here you go. Now that grass will expand onto this dirt. You have to Trust me that it will. You can turn it into pathway blocks. Pathway blocks don't ever have mobs spawn on them. But also, if you bone meal the grass, flowers will grow on it. If you bone meal, for example, uh, Nevrak over here, no flowers will grow on it because it's sand. Sand doesn't have flowers growing on it. And I think that's a really interesting example. Also, look, you can see I'm working with the terrain here. There's going to be a big Nevrak mountain that leads up to this little structure, I guess. Because I think I drained a little lake and then put Nevrak at the bottom. Honestly, it's one of those big questions. Why do you do anything in Minecraft? Is why did I do this? It's the same answer. There's no good reason. But um, yeah, I think uh, like ultimately, not everything needs to have a direct use in terms of like, it needs to help the player be more powerful. But I think every block can make Minecraft better when it has more of a use. But it's there's this thing about questions where it's kind of down to what you're asking. If you say, should every block in Minecraft have a use? That's a ridiculous thing. If every block in Minecraft has a use, then every block feels artificial and a bit over the top. But if no blocks in Minecraft have a use, you don't have a game. And so, uh, are the more blocks, blocks in Minecraft with a use, the better, is maybe an interesting question that we could uh, dive down. Uh, but the one that we can definitely answer is like, well, um, you know, should is Minecraft better when they add more features? Yes, that's why there is this big uh, question around updates and hype. Uh, but the thing about hype, right, because we, I feel like people mostly refer to hype when they're talking about video games. I think it's something we really feel in the real world as well. Like, um, I, I think that something you might not appreciate in some of your better friends, like, do you, do you have a friend who, like, you honestly don't really like that much, but, like, he's kind of fun to hang around with? Um, <laughs> I know everyone has this type of friend. It's an archetype, especially the younger you are. The, the You know, I, I had a friend who was such a, you know, he, he, he laughed while I burned... Uh, what I what felt like was going to be to death, if I've, if I've told that story on the internet before. Um, but yeah, he, he was a monster. Um, gen genuinely, he was like one of the, the most like ghoulish people that makes me question humanity. But also, I mean, like, uh, you know, like it was fun to be around. And he also, he was good protection. Like he liked me. And so it was like a, it was a valuable form of protection whenever uh, something crazy would happen. It'd be like, well, I got the crazy man on my side. I've got the sociopath uh, on Team Andrew, so... You know, you better watch out. And honestly, that, that that's the that's the interesting value in life to sociopaths and to scary people. But I also think um, it, <laughs> I don't think he's doing okay right now. I think he got brain damage recently. So you know, sorry, sorry to my good friend uh, and slash all the sociopath who laughed while I uh, while I burned alive. But um, the uh, <laughs> that's a fun story we should tell sometime. But uh, yeah, I think um, like you know, having someone who's there to be like, this is a cool thing we should be doing, is quite valuable. Like uh, the idea of a tastemaker. Is something that seems ridiculous because like well there are good things out there you don't need someone to tell you what's good and what's not but actually i think a lot of us do a lot of us do need to work out like well i don't want to look through you know um every single social event happening and work out which one of these should i be interested in um i think most people would rather would, would much rather uh just be like okay i've got someone who knows what's good and what's not and they can help me like, uh, even, even if you're like, okay, I'm not a fashion person, so maybe this is the most blasphemous statement I'll ever say to someone. Um, but, like, I, I, I genuinely don't have an intuitive understanding of fashion. Having someone who does, who I can trust, who's just like, yeah, this looks good, this looks weird, this looks good, was, like, valuable to me as a teenager to, like, work out from there what my own tastes were, etc. Uh, and in the same way, when I'm playing, like, uh, you know, you know the standard thing, if you don't know how something works, you just Google, how does this work, go onto YouTube, someone helps you out. But also, if you want to know, like, okay, well, what's, what's, what's exciting, uh, what, you know, what, what, what's so cool about this new Zombies trailer, or this new game, or even this new Minecraft update, I think there is a value to be had in that, and, you know, I don't want to, like, sound like I'm saying, like, wow, the Toy Cat channel is so useful here, but I do want to say that it's something that I think is a, is a service I didn't even realize people were providing, myself included, like, Having someone who's there to be like, yes, this is exciting, this is not, is really valuable because of how overhyped everything needs to be. Markets, there is a new exciting trailer for everything, even when Minecraft teams up with Crocs. 
they released like this fun set of trailers where like, oh, he's in sports mode and then he's in relax mode and then he's. In... I I don't think Cro Crocs have a sport mode, but you know, they, even if they do, like this is a ridiculous trailer to try and get you to buy a pair of shoes. Like, <laughs> you know, come on, come on, Minecraft. I thought you were. I thought you were a video game. I didn't know you were a shoe marketing company. Um, but you know, like, uh, if you are excited for Minecraft shoes, this trailer is great. But if you're not, you don't know. Like, should I care about this? I know that Crocs exist. Is Crocs teaming up with Minecraft a big deal, or do they team up with a bunch of people? That's, you know, these are all the questions you'd like to know the answers to, but which you might not. Also, I really shouldn't have left my shulker box all the way over there. That was probably a big mistake. But since, I, I probably need to go get a bed sometime soon anyway. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know what, it's, it's sun's gonna go very small time, so I guess I'd better get ready for that. Oh no, I have Neverack here. I don't have to get ready for anything. Um, yeah, the what, like, um... Having, having like, a, it used to be that, like, well, if there's a marketing budget for something, if people are spending a lot of money on it, it has to be good, because why would people try to get you, you know, like, a bad product can't be marketed into the, into popularity. But I think more and more, especially as, like, you know, things, uh, as our, you know, standards are changing, it's like, yeah, actually, there are, there is marketing for all sorts of niche bad products that you don't care about. And so having someone to go through those things is potentially valuable. I think having... Uh, having someone in your life who can say like, well, this is good, is of a real value to people, even though it sounds like the lamest thing in the world. And I think that's that's the funny thing about the real world, is that there are so many important parts of it that sound really, really lame. Um, you know, that, that thing, things that make the world that we know function, that are like, well, this is this is kind of dull though, right? There's the, we, we, it's gotta be, it's gotta be better than this. Also, let's go get our bed, but let's walk along my Never Fortress to get there. You ever seen it at night? I haven't ever seen it at night. Oh, I've got a bed in here. Perfect. Wow. See, that's <laughs> that's what I was really trying to do. Actually, trying to show you that I kept a bed in here. Because again, I um, I really like this project, destroying an entire Never Fortress, rebuilding it. It was one of those things a lot of people uh, enjoyed uh, while it existed. It's one of those things I think I made the mistake on assuming people it would be like a fun uh, viral video. Instead, okay, let's make sure that you don't kill my wandering trader because he's my friend. He's got pockets, and in those pockets, he keeps coral. Somehow, the coral doesn't die when it's in his pockets. I don't know how that is, but, um... Uh, are your pockets wet, sir? Is that what's happening here? Um, but yeah, so... I think we should make this, like, a little bit taller, just because it gets so close to the ground here. Just to make sure it's a little better here. So, um, yeah, there is a... A really interesting argument to be made that, like, yeah, everyone needs a taste... Everyone needs someone... You know, I, 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 I like the word tastemaker because it's like the most ridiculous one. But like, uh, you know, we, we do need like people to guide us through uh, different parts of life because as things get more and more complex, you can't know about everything. Like knowing about how, um, I don't know, like electrical sockets work is, uh, you know, like it's, it's something that everyone might have known about 50 years ago. But now wouldn't you rather spend the hours that you would spend learning about electricals, learning about like, I don't know, like, how to make a pretty Minecraft build. <laughs> Terrible example. Um, you know, we're, we're leaning into a more and more specialized world where everyone is, like, learning about an increasingly niche set of skills. And, uh, okay, now I, I, I... It turns out I did take my red shulker box. I have entirely forgotten that. My memory is very good, trust me. Besides when it's terrible, my memory is great. But, um... Yeah, the, uh... The, there's, there's, this, uh there's this incessant, like, need to, like, ever, everything to be the biggest thing in the world. And I think sometimes you need to say, like, no, not everything is the biggest event of the century. Not everything is the big thing you need to watch this, 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 this exact moment now. Uh, this can be good enough for later. Uh, this, this is like, exactly, you know, I, I, there's a lot of YouTube channels I watch where I'm like, yeah, it's not, ex I, I'm glad they're a part of the routine, but they're not the very best thing in the world. And um, I think uh, with Minecraft updates, uh, that's like where the point updates come in, right? Like, oh yeah, 1.19.4. It's probably going to go into Snapshot uh, this week as I as I record this. Like, maybe it's going to be in there as of tomorrow, you know? That's that's a crazy possibility. Um, but, uh, you know, like, ultimately, like, it's not an exciting overall update. It has one cool feature, but it's coming out, and it'll make Minecraft a little better. If you want, you could use it as an opportunity to then, you know, like, go and get those mob heads in survival. Like, I... Uh, actually, you know, I, are, the mob, are the mob head note block things already in Bedrock, and I just forgot about it? But, um... You know, like, as, as, that small things coming out are important because if everything is the biggest thing you've ever seen, there's this, uh, there's this fun thing about, like, uh, getting used to things. Like, if everything's the biggest thing you've ever seen, 
then nothing is the biggest thing you've ever seen. Shocks and awes only work because they happen once. And this this is an interesting thing I've kind of come into with uh, the the traveling world to some extent. Like I um so to so to move into my my real talk now. Uh, now now that I've scared people off by talking about marketing and hype and just placing Neverack for uh, God knows how many minutes straight. Uh, I think let, let's let's talk about it now. Now now that I know that you're only here if you actually uh, care. I um I used to have this real big belief that traveling uh you know because I, I really like to go and explore new places. The first thing I did when I uh like had uh like independence and had any amount of money like it cost like five pounds to fly to Denmark and I was like I'll just do that and see what happens. Uh, I, and then I I was like oh I should go check out Slovenia and then so I just like I. I've been continuously, like, kind of traveling. You can see some of the early travels on my second channel. Like, it's only, like, seven years ago I'm talking about. So I'm not going to pretend I'm a guru. But I am going to say that, like, I really like going to new places. Because I have this, like, big thing inside of me that realizes that life is different based on where you're from. If I was born in the U.S. rather than just, you know, like, spending time here, I would not only... I mean, like, I've said this before, but I would, I would be fat. I, I am surrounded by so much good food all the time here. And it's like, it's amazing, but I have to, I have to put a lot of effort into like, you know, not falling into that. Me as a teenager had no impulse control on food. So I, I would be, you know, fat, obviously, is like, a, is the, is the joke version. But I also would be very different. Like, I think the way that I viewed, for example, government, the way that I viewed uh, money, the way that I viewed, even something like guns, right? Or healthcare. He healthcare is the fun one. Like, well, you know, like I'm, I'm, once you're surrounded in a system where it's like, oh yeah, if you need... Uh, to go to the hospital, you go to the hospital, uh, you know, like, that. I, I was shocked as a child to learn that pets, uh, don't get free hospital treatment, and apparently, you know, they don't in the UK, fun fact, but, like, that, there's an example of, like, a defining view that, like, to me, it seems so obvious that, like, well, this is, a this is, like, a thing everyone deserves, like, it, you know, you can't, you can't die just because we're not going to the hospital, but that's my view because I'm from the UK, where it is, effectively, and it's not human, right, it's a taxpayer, right, I guess, uh, you could say, um, and so, but, like, if you were born in the US, it's like, I, I, I've seen some convincing arguments that, like, well, you know, there's no such thing as free, obviously, that's, that, a lot of people say that it's free, but that's not actually, you, you don't just make things not cost money by saying words like that, but, um, the, the more, the more salient point is, like, well, uh, you know, all the people who currently get paid for that, you'd have to be saying, like, well, you are going to have to work for free, or you're just saying, like, well, we're paying for this still, just in a different way, and, what it, you know, like, it's, so you're not actually making it a right, you're just making it an obligation. And, you know, some, some rights are better as obligations. Like, you know, you have the right not to be murdered, but we don't say it that way. We say that if someone murders you, that you have an obligation not to murder other people. And if you, if you don't meet that obligation, we send you to the bad place for a very long time. So, uh, you know, in, in the same way, like, the, the views on healthcare change, just because of where I was born. I like to believe that it's this really deep-seated value. But if we're being totally honest with ourselves, it's because of where I am in the world. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Americans who hate the system uh, of governments in which they live, it's because they are surrounded by it all the time. A lot of other countries aspire to have a stable uh, system that works in the same, you know, maybe not politically speaking, but like, uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, there is a lot of, there is a lot of things about how you view the world that change solely based on where you happen to plop into it. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's why I've always found traveling to be interesting. It's like, the longer you are somewhere, the more you can, like, understand that place and why it exists. It's not that people who just live in a different set of borders to you are evil, it's that they have a different value set. Like, even, even some of the ones I find most incompatible with my own beliefs, um, it still comes from a understanding of, like, also look, the grass spread, the grass has a use, and it doesn't really if you then replace it with never act, but the idea is still there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, even even the most useless seeming block in Minecraft, I think I named just three uses there: dirt paths, um, flowers spreading to other blocks. Um, you know, there's uh, the it changes uh, the color based on which biome you're in, um, and so you know, isn't that kind of useful? Anyway, so I like to travel for that reason, and I um, so uh, during uh, you know the pandemic, uh, there was a there was an opportunity uh, to, or like it wasn't even an opportunity; it was like a it was a do this or, you know, like, consequences sort of thing of, like, come, you know, like, come spend some time in the United States of America. And that, that was, like, quite fun to me because I, um, I've always been very acutely aware that if you spend, like, seven days somewhere, some people do this, they spend three days somewhere, then they're like, oh, yeah, it's so much better in, uh, Napoli than it is, uh, where I am right now, uh, 
<laughs> you know, some people like, uh, you know, like, they're like, oh yeah, things are just so much better in Paris, France. Uh, by the way, I don't know why people have to like name the country after Paris as if there's, as if there's any other Paris uh, that you'd be referring to. Like, oh yeah, life is so much better in Paris, Texas, is it? But anyway, uh, point, point aside here is um, the, the, the interesting thing, also we've used up a full shulker box of Neverack just today. Uh, if you count the building the wall, I used up four shulker boxes of Neverack. I'm just, I'm just pounding my way through this stuff. Uh, apparently, if you cover your world in it, it takes a lot of Nevrak. Who would have ever guessed that that could be true? Um, I think I'm going to go, you know what, just to make this easy for myself, I'm going to go do that little island in the middle of the ocean too. It looks like a nice easy one to Nevrakify. Uh, and I'll make it like quite tall, because it's again in the middle of the ocean of what will be lava. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, like if you spend, you have to spend like some real time somewhere to really understand somewhere. Like, you know, maybe years even. If you want to truly understand, I don't know, New York culture, you can't just visit for a weekend or even for a month. You might have to spend a lot longer there. Um, and, and obviously, like most things in understanding, it's not that you don't understand it or you do. It's that you increase your understanding the more you're exposed to something. But um, yeah, basically, uh, so I always assumed when I was younger, I would live in the US. And so when the opportunity came up, I was like, yeah, OK, let's let's see what this is all about. And um, then, you know, like uh, it became not like a temporary thing, but it became like uh, this is the only viable long-term option for a certain, uh, you know, for, for certain things to happen. Um, you know, I, maybe you know what those things are. And uh, ultimately, it was one of those things that I was like, well, this sounds like, you know, it sounds like an opportunity. I think one of the scary things about aging is the older you get, the more responsibilities you just start picking up. You just start being like, oh yeah, I've got to do this thing, I've got to do that thing. Uh, you, you, you literally do just start picking up responsibilities like a cat, a plant, a house. Um, and so the older you get, the harder it is to just be like, yeah, why don't I just drop my life for a couple of years and go move, uh, somewhere else. And especially somewhere that I'd always assumed I'd be living, like the US. I, every job I've ever done for myself besides one has been US based online, like, uh, or has been dollar based, we'll say at the very least. Uh, and so it was, um, it was always very interesting to me. Uh, like, you know, I, I felt like this almost like second loyalty, like as someone who grew up with no money, having a country that's like, yeah, we don't care about all this other stuff. We care about money. A, lo a lot of people don't think America is that way. They're like, ooh, wait till you learn till you can't. It's like, no, you just don't know what the rest of the world is like. I, you know, but, you know, sure, there are some like minor social judgments in, in every particular place. But as far as like the, the king of just, we don't care about anything else, just show us the money. That is, that is the US. There's no, there's no questioning it. So I was really excited for, how is there a guardian here? Is this a, is this an ocean monument or did I, you know, I don't, I don't want to kill him just in case, but that is wacky, right? That is, that is weird. That's not, that's not a very normal thing, right? Can we all agree? Also, we got a trident throwing drowned, but I, I, I need a trident anyway. So if you happen to offer me one, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I had this opportunity to come, come live here for a bit. And, um, so during the switch from like for a few months, for a few years, obviously, uh, the, the visa, the reason to enter the country has to change as well. You have to get a full on, um, a full on, you know, like work visa, a full on, like you have to, you have to switch your whole, uh, what's it called? Residency over, uh, to being a, also I put beds in all of these, apparently that's fun. Um, you know, I had to, I had to like switch a lot of things over to being here. And that means going through the full legal process. And Fortunately, most people, by the way, um, you, you, I, I'm very, I'm very fortunate that I'm in a group of people uh, that actually can get a visa to the United States. For most people, even you know, like a European countries, it's very tricky to just go to America. You can't just say, "I would like to be in the United States, sir." Uh, it's like there's a, there's a lot of like steps. I, I, I happen to have a pathway open to a better visa because if this weird uh, entertainment gig uh, that you, you're watching right now. Um, but even that, I was like, okay, so it's just this visa process. I've spoken to people who have gotten them. It's like, it, you know, you, you get it done, right? And so going through that process was like the most hellish, nightmarish thing imagined. It's like, okay, so, you know, I, I, I think I've mentioned before that so many things in life, there's like two responses. One, uh, you know, look, most, most of what you're trying to do is like, okay, this is a thing I enjoy. And the second thing is I'm trying to get you to shut up and leave me alone. Uh, where it's like, yeah, 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 you know, like so much of life is like, I don't want to do with this right now, but I'm being polite and I'm pretending that I can humor this. That second response is exactly what the process for the, you know, I guess I can say it out loud, the, the, it's called the O1B visa. Uh, that's that's exactly what the process is like. It is the US government telling you repeatedly, 
one, give us money, two, give us lots of needless paperwork, and three, can you just shut up and go away? Our migration figures look better if you just didn't come, so why don't you please not? Um, so not only did I have to pay an agency thousands of dollars, it was, uh, it was, the total bill was I think 11,000 or something by the time everything was said and done, but I also had to start signing up for all sorts of fake, like, so, <laughs> again, th this is a real thing that anyone who does this visa will, will have to do, they can't talk about it publicly, but I, I didn't go through the steps, so it's fine. Uh, you have to sign up for a union, and of it, like, you know, like a, an, a, like an actor's union, but obviously I'm not an actor. Uh, it's just the visa was designed in the 1980s, and they haven't bothered updating it, so you need to sign up for a union. And obviously there's no union for content creators, because we're all self-contractors. you know, And so instead you just sign up for a union that agrees, we exist, we won't do anything for you, but if you give us a few hundred dollars, we'll say that you can meet these requirements. So it's like, okay, that's, that's annoying, but I guess that's fine. And then, uh, you know, it's like, okay, you've got to have an agent. And again, same thing. No agent can really help with YouTubers. There are ones that exist, but they're not... They're not uh, accredited in the various ways. So you pay an agent a few hundred dollars and they say, I'll never contact you again, but because you legally, every time you refile this, have to have an agent, I will just say, yes, he is still my client every single time. Like it's, it's I don't want to say it's corrupt because corrupt isn't the right word for it, but it's one of these processes where every single step in the way could have been redesigned, uh, could have been made easier, but ultimately it's just not in the interest of it. And so um, then I would have to like go find people in my industry to vouch for me, uh, which I could have found, but it was like, can I, now I have, to, I have to annoy people in my personal life just so one person at a government office somewhere can go, yep, sounds good to me, and just tick it off, or can say, ah, I don't know about this, and ignore it. It is, it, it was it was so much work, and then, uh, you know, after after all of that, some personal circumstances changed. Um, you know, to, to be totally honest with you, I, I, I've i gone through a, a change in, uh, you know, like a living situation, a change in relationship situation. It's It's been... It's been a whole thing that has basically just led to the... And, and and in some part, the two events are linked. Like, going through... Having to go through a very bureaucratic government process uh, is a... is is It's a it's a strain on what should be, you know, like, most most people... Like again, like, you know, I was talking about friends earlier. You know your friend that you don't really like that much, but, like, he's cool and he, like... Uh, he knows he knows what's up and also maybe he protects you. Like, that that type of friend, right? Um, Having, having that friend... Being, would be really useful. Having that friend, if you had to pay him $11,000, otherwise he wouldn't be your friend, and in fact would would cause some real issues, you would immediately be like, well, no, you know. Um, well, let's just say you had to pay someone else $11,000 for him to stay friends with you. You'd be like, ooh, I don't know about this one so much. Um, and so, you know, like uh, having uh, extra stressing points, not not really a, not really a good thing. It's, uh, I think it can be, people are really, 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 like, you know, I, I think it's wild that, like, if you think about the idea of lifelong friendships and stuff, it's, it's crazy it can exist sometimes. Like, I, I, uh, I, I think it's something, uh, you, people are always going through crazy things and changing and growing and evolving, etc. And so to have that on top of having some additional stresses, maybe placed on you by a third party, maybe at extreme, <laughs> uh, with extreme, uh, what's the word here, like duress or whatever, um, it was just one of those things that made me go, ah, quite loudly. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically the situation. I uh, I'm, I'm trying to leave out all of the most uh, sensitive details because I don't mind talking about my situation, right? Like I I will share as many of my details as I like, but I, I also want to protect the details of anyone else involved here. And so I just want to say that like yeah, going through that whole process, I you know I I think it made me realize um, how lucky you are, like because you know getting a visa somewhere, it's like a thing that everyone does all the time, right? But I think it's like it's it's given me a new appreciation for the places that you can live without having to apply for one. Like the you know the ideal is everyone looks at a visa and says yeah we want to have people here who are like safe who are maybe like um, you know going to bring benefit to the economy because every country ultimately is just a club that you happen to be a member of. And so if you're going to let someone into that club, you want to make sure they're a good applicant. You don't want to have any bad members in your club. Maybe you could say. But when you when you see it at a certain point and you're like, yeah, it's just it's just this lazy part over there where we realized we could make some money because these people are desperate. There's a different there's a slight different uh, tune that you can have from that. And so yeah, if there's one thing I've learned from the whole process of of uh, being temporarily uh, in the U.S. and then not, it's that. And so why am I here now? What am I doing in a country where, uh, like I said, the the process has been declined? Ultimately, um, so I I, I have a, a lease on an apartment. Uh, I'm gonna stay here until that is good on the again not not on the uh, <laughs> the previously aforementioned visa and also staying within all the rules regarding 
um, you know, like, uh, I, I cannot work for a company. I, there's a lot of fun rules about what I can't do. Um, but still, I, I, I've got an apartment here. It is being paid for. And so the goal is to use it as much as I can. And obviously to sort the place out and bring whatever I need to bring out of here. It's, uh, it's going to be a process. But ultimately, isn't everything a process? <laughs> uh, the process of turning my, 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 my little island here into a big nether is a very long and it's going to be a very long process. Uh, but ultimately, I think I'll be better off for it. I think I um, I think it's easy to look at something and be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be in this place uh, alone uh, in a country where I don't have uh, the same social support networks that I had before. Um, there's you know there's a part there's a there's a part of you that can look at that and be like, wow, that's that's kind of scary. But I also think that like anything, um, maybe you can see it as an opportunity. Maybe even maybe even I should uh, this this is like this is like positive thinking if you ever want to do it. Um, you can see anything in life that is a challenge also as an opportunity. That instead of seeing it as like, oh god, I have to do this thing, see it as a branching path. And a lot of those branching paths are like, okay, I see a, uh, you know, like I see a wallet on the ground. Wow, that's going to be so annoying to return. Or maybe you have a crisis of like, oh, I have to, I, I know I'm meant to return this, but I really don't want to. Instead, think to yourself, either I keep the wallet and, you know, like I... I therefore make some money, or I get to return it and feel real good knowing that I could have just not, and I chose to do it anyway. That's something that made me feel so much better about, like, any nice act I do, is that, <laughs> maybe this is, like, the, the most monstrous thing that makes me a, you know, a serial killer, sociopath that doesn't understand human emotions. But the moment you realize that every nice thing you do is actually an option, you know, people people will do a really good job at convincing you that it's not a choice, and that you, know, you have to do it that way. Uh, and, you know, like, that's that's a way that some people need to learn morality in the world, sure. But when you realize that everything you do is a choice, uh, even the most ridiculously, like, you really should do that things, there's still choices. Even the things that you definitely, definitely, definitely should do and really should not see as a choice, it's still a choice at some point down the line. And so at some point down the line, you get to decide, where do you go on that choice? And so I could have just decided, like, okay, I don't want to come back here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm just gonna be in the UK. Things are perfectly happy there. I'm, I'm in a very advantageous situation. Like I, I've got a place in in the UK. In one, in 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 my favorite city in the UK, in fact. Um, but uh, you know, like uh, instead, it's an opportunity. Instead, um, you know, even like uh, you know, the saddest thing, right? Even even the the things that cause all the tears and all the sadness. It's like okay, and now this is this is where things change. How do they go after they change? Do they get better? Do they get worse? Do they get a lot worse? You know, this is this is something you can't know. I think ultimately, things usually more things go well than go poorly overall, right? If you if you really zoom out in life, you can say that like in general, more you know, like the the bad things you don't think of as bad decisions, but the good things you can think of and be like, yeah, I made the right call there. But to make good decisions, you've got to make decisions, and to make decisions, you have to be aware you're going to make some number of bad decisions, and that's where I currently am at. I'm uh. Exploring an opportunity, and then where does my uh, where does my life go after that? It's something I'll have to see. But for now, I've got a place in uh, I, I'm in Las Vegas. Uh, I am going to be leaving and then coming back, and then I'm going to be like settling up the whole thing. And so for the next couple of months, you'll see me, or rather the next three months, uh, you'll see me come back and forth. If uh, if the uh, if 1.20 has a release date, I'll probably specifically go to the UK so I can be in the right place for that. But otherwise, um, this is where I am uh, and where I will be for a few more months. And so, yeah, I'm enjoying Las Vegas. It, and, you know, honestly, I've been here in the summer where it's just been burning me. Like, I like I like living... I, I like the American uh, West. I think the, 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 the geography of it's beautiful. I love the, you know, the attitude towards, like, you can do basically anything you want. Uh, it's, it's, it's very fun. There's a lot of... <laughs> you know, the, this, is, this, this whole, like, city that I'm in right now is founded just on the idea of, like, what if we allowed gambling this big no-no in every other state? Um, there's something, there's something very fun I find about that, but also it's just a, it's, you know, the, the, the climate is really cool in winter. Like it's, it's usually too hot and burning in the summer, but in the winter, it's like, Ooh, instead of being freezing cold every day, it's perfectly neutral. And so, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day today. As you see this video, I'm probably, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a nice little, there's a little climb in the desert I've wanted to do for a while. I'm probably going to go do that. Uh, you know, I, I don't know for sure. You know, maybe maybe this is the last video I ever upload because I died doing that climb. There's some fun sections, some ropes in it. Uh, I'll tweet that out on Twitter, at IBXToyCat. But yeah, for now, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this video. I hope uh, that it explained roughly where I am and where I'm at. And uh, also the fact that, yeah, I'm trying my best 
to see it as a opportunity for the future. But if you just want to understand where I'm at and why I'm here, uh, I am in Las Vegas for the next two months and I'm here because things, uh, things be crazy. But no matter how crazy things get, you've still made agreements and leases and all that stuff. And so I'm trying to take advantage as best I can of that. But again, ultimately, I like living here. And uh, I'm going to be getting myself an ice cream cake. I, uh, the people of my stream were very kind enough to tip me enough money to go buy an ice cream cake. And I've never had one in my life. Apparently, it's like a children's birthday party thing. <laughs> but yeah, you know, see, that's the thing I would have experienced if I was born in the US that I haven't. So um, yeah, there's going to be all sorts of fun experiences that I get to have. And I'll share them with you both here on the YouTube channel and via Twitter at IBXToyCat. You know, assuming I keep using Twitter, I, that's that's a whole we should, that's a whole fun conversation we should have sometime. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed uh, the progress I've made on my my little my little island today, and I look forward to seeing more of it on the streams this week. Goodbye.